Another property that we can use to separate or purify a mixture of proteins is their net charge. So why do proteins have a net charge? So remember, proteins are composed of 20 different types of amino acids. And these different types of amino acids differ from one another based on their side chain group. Now, some of these side chain groups have a positive charge, such as lysine and arginine, while others have a neutral charge, for example, glycine and valine and so forth. And yet other amino acids have a full negative charge, for example, glutamate and aspartate. So we have different types of amino acids, and because proteins are composed of a variation of these different amino acids, the ones that have more side chain groups that are positively charged end up having a net positive charge, while the ones have equal amounts, they have a net neutral charge, and those that have more negatively charged side chains, those have a net negative charge. Now, because certain proteins differ from one another based on their net charge, this is another property that we can use to separate and purify proteins. And the technique, the method that we use to separate proteins based on the net charge is called ion exchange chromatography or simply ion chromatography. So the setup in ion exchange chromatography is very similar to that of gel uh, filtration chromatography. So it looks something like this. So we have two types of setups. And in each setup, we have a funnel that is placed on top of a long column. And inside that column, we have special gel beads. Now, in this particular case, the gel beads are made so that they have a, a positive charge. And in this case, the gel beads are made so that they have a negative charge. For example, the gel bead can be made from a sugar polymer cellulose. And we can add special side groups onto the cellulose that make them negatively charged as shown in the following diagram. So this is a single bead that is found inside this column here. So the setup in ion exchange chromatography consists of a funnel placed on top of a narrow column. The column is packed with these charred gel beads and depending on the proteins that we actually want to separate, we can make those beads either positively charged, as in this case, or negatively charged, as in this particular case. So red means positively charged and blue means negatively charged. And these beads are usually made from some type of carbohydrate polymer such as cellulose. <clears throat> okay, so in this lecture, we're going to focus on this setup. So let's zoom in on one of these, or let's zoom in on a small section of our column. We get the following diagram. So these blue beads are our negatively charged cellulose beads as shown in the following diagram. Now, let's suppose we want to separate a mixture of three different proteins, and these proteins differ from one another based on their net charge. So one of these proteins, we're going to call protein number one, has a net positive charge. So we have three of these charges, which make it very positive. The second protein, shown in brown, contains two positive charges and one negative charge. And so the net charge is positive 1. So the net charge here is positive 3. The net charge here is positive 1. So this is only slightly positive. The final protein is shown in green, and this contains one positive charge and two negative charges. And so the net charge in this case is negative 1. And so that makes this last protein a negatively charged protein. It contains a, neg a, a net negative charge of negative 1. So the question is, when we place the mixture of proteins into the, in, into the column that contains these negatively charged cellulose beads, what exactly will happen? What will be the rate of movement of each of one of these uh, proteins? Well, as you might know, the positively charged proteins will be attracted to the negatively charged beads. Uh, beads. And the more positive charge we have, we know by Coulomb's law, the greater that attraction will be. And so what that means is these very positive, these proteins that have a very large net positive charge will be attracted to those beads. The ones that are slightly positive will be attracted, but not as much. The attraction will be less. And these negatively charged will not be attracted. They will be repelled. <clears throat> 
repelled. And so what that means is these negatively charged proteins will travel the quickest in this column that contains these negatively charged beads, while these very positive proteins will essentially not travel at all because they will be stuck, they will be attracted to those negatively charged beads as a result of the electric attraction between positive charges and negative charges. Now, one analogy I can give is the following. Let's suppose we have two kids. One of these kids loves chocolate chip cookies and the other one hates chocolate chip cookies. In fact, the second one is allergic to chocolate chip cookies. Now, let's suppose we ask these two kids to walk down a road and in the middle of the road, we have a table. On that table, we have chocolate chip cookies. Now, as the two kids walk along the pathway, the kid that loves those chocolate chip cookies will stop at the table to actually eat those cookies, while the kid that doesn't like them will keep on walking. And so, basically, the kid that makes it to the end of the pathway is the kid that is not attracted to those chocolate chip cookies. And so, in the same analogous way, because this negatively charged protein isn't attracted to the negatively charged beads, it will make it down to that pathway the fastest. It, 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 it will be collected at the bottom the fastest as compared to the other proteins. So, to see exactly how we can basically carry out this experiment with these three proteins, let's take a look at the following diagram. So we have diagram A, through E. And let's begin with diagram A. So in diagram A, we take our solution of three proteins and we pour it into our funnel. In diagram B, that protein mixture at the initial moment that we pour it in basically collects at the top of the column and it has not separated yet. So this is our protein mixture that consists of three proteins, protein one, protein two, and protein three. Now, after we wait some time, what happens is the gravitational force will basically pull on those molecules and the protein that has the least positive charge, so protein 3 with the negative charge, will basically be pulled and it will repel those negatively charged beads and so it will travel the fastest down our column and so it will end up all the way at the bottom first. And so this is protein 3. Now, the slightly positive protein will be attracted to those beads, but it will also be pulled down by the force of gravity. And so, because the attraction, uh, the attraction isn't that great, it will end up somewhere in the middle below protein one, which will be at the top because it has that very strong electric attraction to those beads. And so over time, when this protein three ends up at the bottom, it will end up at the bottom first, we can open our knob and collect that protein in a test tube. And likewise, we can wait longer period of time and then we can collect protein number two in our second test tube. Now, the problem with protein one is we have to wait a very, very long time. And so to speed up the process, we can basically look at diagram E and in diagram E, what we do is we essentially pour a salt solution into our mixture. And what the salt solution does is, so the salt solution, for example, can contain sodium chloride ions. And what happens is the sodium and the chloride ions dissociate in our solution and those positively charged sodium ions will begin to interact with these negative charged beads. And so what that will do is that will disrupt those electric interactions between protein one and these negatively charged beads. And so by pouring our salt solution, we're breaking the electric interactions between the protein and the negatively charged beads. And so now gravity can basically overcome that electric force and this protein will begin to move down and eventually it will elute and we can collect it in another test tube. So let's suppose this is our test tube that contains that protein number one that we wanted to actually isolate in the first place.
So we can see ion exchange chromatography is actually only helpful if there is a big difference between the net charges on our protein. We cannot use ion exchange chromatography to purify proteins if all the proteins in our mixture have the same exact type of net negative uh, of net charge. For example, if all the proteins have a net neutral charge, then that means none of them will be attracted to those charged beads. And so what that means is the rate at which they actually move along our along our column will be exactly the same. And that is not useful because that means we cannot separate them and collect them into these separate beakers as shown in the following diagram.